160. He's gone. Hello everybody and welcome uh, here to the Maxworks Ranch. Today we're going to be doing a review of this little guy. This is the Ruger LCP 380 Custom. And I picked this up uh, fairly recently uh, to be kind of my new pocket carry gun. Uh, the reason I did that is because traditionally I've carried this. This is a Bursa BP9CC. Uh, it's basically the exact same thing as an MP shield uh, in 9mm. And the reason I picked this up is because I do a lot of Craigslist business, uh, as some of you know, and showing up and crawling around bikes and looking at cars and stuff and having this even concealed, uh, it began to print. It was making some people uncomfortable. I felt it was, you know, reasonable for my safety. So I've moved to this Ruger LCP that I can stick in my pocket and it doesn't really show up that much. Anyway, today we're gonna be doing kind of a, an in-depth review of this gun. I'm very, very fond of it and I've been very, very happy with it in the time that I've had it. And so we're out here at the ranch, we're gonna put a few rounds down range, we're gonna answer some very important questions uh, about this gun. And in general, just kind of give you guys a, uh, a feel of what it's like to have one of these, to own it, to shoot it. Uh, and so that you can make a decision whether or not this is the right gun for you. Now, a few things to point out. I picked this up for $239 shipped. I had it transferred to a local FFL, picked it up within two days without any problems. Uh, it was brand new. Now, the difference between the Ruger LCP and the LCP Custom is the LCP Custom has a blued finish. Um, it has this uh, anodized and skeletonized trigger mechanism uh, made out of billet aluminum. And more importantly, it has a full set of sights. So I'll bring you guys in for a uh, close-up here in a second. But the, uh, the standard LCP just has a small front nub and a slit in the back. Whereas this actually has a proper set of sights that you can use to aim down range. Uh, and to me, that's worth the extra 30 bucks. I, I really see no reason to buy the base LCP uh, over this one, because this is a, a significantly better product in my opinion. So let me bring you guys in uh, here closer and uh, we'll take a look at size comparisons, fit in the hand, stuff like that. So here you can see uh, kind of the size of the Ruger. It comes with a standard six round magazine, plus one in the chamber, so seven rounds. Um, so if I take this and close it, put the magazine in because it's empty, you can see I got pretty decent sized hands. My hands are pretty meaty, uh, and so for me it's a it's a two finger gun like that. Uh, they sell a seventh round magazine that lets you get the tip of the pinky on, but I don't have it here with me today. Um, it basically conceals in the hand very nicely. You can carry it like that without attracting a ton of attention. And if we compare it to the nine millimeter, I mean it becomes a really drastic difference. A lot of people are like, you know, why would you carry a 380? Well, this is why I would carry a 380 because it's almost an inch shorter down here and almost an inch shorter here. And when you look at it from a thickness standpoint, um, I don't have the exact numbers with me. You can look them up. That's not what this video is about. But you can see that this is definitely thinner uh, than the 9mm. And this is a single stack 9. There's nothing fancy about this. So the other thing I like, you know, now that we're kind of up close, I really like the trigger mechanism. Um, the fact that it doesn't have a, a mag cutout. So even without the magazine, I can pull the trigger and it'll fire. You have a hammer back here that you can see uh, when it's cocked and locked. There's a slit right here that uh, you can see uh, if there's a, a round in it. So let me put a round in it real quick and just show you guys. So if I close this, you can see there's a tiny little sliver of brass there. Just another visual indicator that you have a, uh, a round chambered. And so all in all, a really nice gun. Uh, the only real downside I found with it kind of physically is to break it down you need a screwdriver to pop this off. You can see it's already starting to chip a little bit right there where I've had to wedge in there to pop this pin out. The other thing is unlike this gun the spring isn't captive and so when you take it apart kind of the spring mechanism that's that sits on that pin in there um, it uh, will shoot off across the garage. I've taken this gun apart maybe three or four times now and two of those times the spring shot across the garage. Uh, they actually sell like a three pack on Amazon of these springs which should be a good indication that uh, people lose them all the time. So like I said it's a good little gun. I really like the way it feels in my hand. Uh, it's real smooth so let's put a few rounds down range uh, and kind of get an idea of what it looks like uh, firing the gun. All right. 
so we're gonna put uh, some some of these hardball uh, reman rounds downrange, and this thing feeds pretty much uh, pretty much everything. So I have two six plus one mags. So this one is actually made by Ruger. It comes with the gun. There's only one magazine that comes with the gun, uh, and this is a pro mag unit. Now, this uh, Pro Mag unit I paid about 20 bucks for. I'm really kind of displeased with it. Uh, it's made in the USA, which is nice. But this cutout right here, that's designed uh, for the magazine release, I had to file it out. There's a bunch of burrs and stuff in there, and it wasn't, it wasn't working properly. So I had, to, I had to file it out. So that was kind of annoying. And then I also bought this, the California Assault Mag, which is a 10 round unit, uh, which we're gonna shoot first. It's a little tight on the fit as well because it's a pro mag, but I mean you have <laughs> a magazine sticking down that far, so it's uh, it's a it's a pretty ridiculous contraption. Uh, it's cool for the range though, so you can get quite a few rounds down range. Um, by the way, I'm twirling this around. There is literally nobody for miles in any direction of where I am right now, so uh, uh, it's actually pretty safe. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna chamber around and we're going to shoot this steel plate down here. And I just kind of want you guys to look at what this gun looks like when I'm firing it in profile so you can get an idea of how much it kicks. And now I'm going to fire it one handed to give you kind of a, another idea of what it looks like. That's it. So, I'm going to change the cameras around a little bit and fire some more rounds down range. In my opinion, the most important thing about a carry gun uh, is in fact your ability to carry it. And so, you can see everything is empty, everything is clear. We're just going to put a magazine in it. It's all empty. Now, I use this. This is a DeSanto uh, 3G, or G3 holster, I'm sorry. And this takes a little bit of breaking in, but, uh, well, the holster is very secure. Um, it doesn't have any sort of retention mechanism. It just kind of sits in there, but uh, it is pretty secure. The gun doesn't just flop around in it. Um, the only downside is, with the custom, these top sights, they tend to catch a little bit on the holster when it's coming out. Uh, and so you just need to be aware of that. But in all in all, this holster is very comfortable. I paid like, I don't know, 20 bucks for this, I think. And for the money, it works really well. Uh, this gun spends the majority of its time in my truck. Um, obviously I carry it, but not everywhere I go. Also, it comes with this uh, nice little pouch, um, nice little Ruger pouch. And so it allows you to kind of store it out of the way if you need to, um, you know, when everything that comes, you know, with it in the box. Now that we've covered kind of all of the regular review stuff that everybody always talks about in these things, we can have some fun because that's what this channel is all about. It's all about having some fun. So around the world, uh, there's a lot of people on the internet, keyboard commandos that go around saying things like, Oh, a 380 ACP ain't gonna stop a man. Or when I go out, I carry dual 45 hardballers because it's the only way I feel safe. Now, the majority of people that come out on the internet and say things like that uh, don't own those guns, and even if they did, they're not allowed out of their mother's basement, and so it tends to not matter. So a lot of people are like, you know, Max, you carry a 380. You know, do you feel safe? Do you feel like that's gonna be enough to protect you in a situation? Which is a reasonable question. So, for comparison's sake, here is a hollow point 9mm, here is a round nose 380, and as you can see, really the 9mm is the same diameter, but it packs a little bit more punch. And so the question is, can you count on this round to save your life? Now, around the world, people are made of about 70% of this stuff, water. So let's put this down range and see what happens to this water bottle when we hit it with a 380 ACP standard hardball round.
Now, that's where the bullet entered, and that's where it went out. Or, I'm sorry, that's where the, probably the bullet entered. That's where it went out. Now, you see this big old gash right here? That would be your body. And believe me when I say, you be dead. Since we live in America, where people aren't 70% water, there's 70% high fructose corn syrup, like this, let's see what happens when you shoot an American with a 380. This is where the round hit, and that's where the round left. And so, even if you're an American, and you are 70% high fructose corn syrup, you still dead. But uh, what about the other big operator issue? You know, it's not a problem for me as much because I'm an experienced operator, but for those of you who are, who are more noobish, dual wielding different calibers. This gun packs a bigger punch, but it's also heavier. This gun is lighter, but it's got a smaller cartridge. So let's find out if there's really any issue with me hitting my targets while dual wielding these guns. Let's do it. Basically just went 10 for 10. Let's do it. So I would say, dual wielding different calibers, pass. Well, it is about a billion degrees out here, but I have dutifully put about 100 rounds through this thing in pretty rapid order. And so, let me kind of now talk about pros and cons on this gun after shooting a bunch. Now, before today, I've put maybe, I don't know, 150 rounds through it, maybe even a little less, somewhere between 100 and 150. So this gun now has about 200, 250 rounds through it, which to me is a broken in gun. So let me, let me talk about a few things I like, a few things I don't like. Number one, let's talk about things I don't like. First of all, this gun is empty. Well, actually, let's just go ahead and talk about that. See that? Now, granted, my hands are sweaty, but I'm a big, strong guy, and this thing is so hard now that it's heated up just to rack the slide. I mean, I can grab onto it with my shirt, but these small serrations just don't do a very good job and there is just a ton, an absolute ton of effort required to do it. So, I mean, I mean I'm not fucking around for the camera or anything like that. This is, there we go. I'm having a hard time. So if I was in a situation where I had to put a lot of rounds through this, uh, you know, in a, in a high stress situation, I would be really, really upset because I'm getting shot at. But more upset is because I can't, work the slide or I'm having a hard time working the slide you really got to grab it up here and you're like okay Max it's not a big deal we just grab it up here the problem is this thing has already given me two pretty good heat blisters and a pretty good like blood blister on my thumb from trying to rack it um, this uh, I'll put it in front of the GoPro to see if maybe the GoPro can catch it but the barrel of this gun right now is just super hot and you can see the bluing start to change color all in all, like you can't can't touch that right now. And comparably to this guy, to this guy, if I put a hundred rounds through this, I can still comfortably rack the slide. Um, I can grab it up here. It's going to be warm, but it's not going to not going to blister me. So I'm really kind of unhappy about that. Now as the gun's starting to cool down a little bit, I can I can work it a little better. But when it's when you freshly fired a lot of rounds through this, it is it's not real happy about it. The next thing is these magazines. Now, the factory magazine pops in pretty nicely, I will say. Even with a round in it, you can usually get it chambered, no problem. The Pro Mag mags are not very good. Um, when there's an actual round in this thing, it has a really hard time getting it to seat and stay seated. Uh, obviously now that I'm trying to demonstrate for this camera, it's it's doing it okay, but when when the gun is really hot, it's just it won't it won't do it. It has a has a real hard time uh, racking the rounds. 
Now, I've only had one failure to eject, um, and this is reman ammunition, and so I won't necessarily go ahead and blame it on the gun, failure to eject. This 10-round uh, one is particularly bad, too. It has a has a real hard time, and sometimes you have to actually work the slide release, or the uh, magazine release to get it to situate properly so that you can cycle the first round. Once the gun cools off, uh, it does a lot better, but there's definitely some fitment issues because the metal is getting hot and uh, it's not performing kind of as advertised. Those are the bad things. Let's talk about the good things. Good things. I really like this trigger. I really like where the trigger breaks. I really like the feel to it. I really like the reset point. It's, it's a very, very, very comfortable trigger. Let me see if I can show you this. But there's, there's a little bit of slack there, but this is pressure, 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 catch. And then as I let it out, right there, I don't know if you guys heard that click or not, but this gun resets right about here. So it has a real, let's try that again with me not talking. Right there. It has a really, really quick reset point, which I like. It really allows you to put a lot of rounds down range real quick if you want. Obviously this gun is not designed for that and it got pretty unhappy with me like I was saying once I got it all warm and toasty. But in general it did pretty well. Uh, the 380 wasn't enough to set off the homemade Tannerite. Uh, usually I set that off with a shotgun shell but I've set it off with a 9mm before. Um, but today it just it wasn't cooperating with the uh, with the 380. Um, I think the 380 is an excellent carry piece. Uh, this is something that, you know, I'm going to take to the range regularly out here so I can practice with it to make sure I'm accurate with it. It's very important that the gun you carry is the gun you shoot. Uh, now, it's a ton of fun to come out here with like a 50 cal and that's cool and that's a fun range toy. But this is something that, you know, one day maybe your life is going to depend on it. So you need to make sure you come out here and practice with it. Um, because the sights are definitely a little weird. For me, it tends to uh, go a little bit down and to the left. Uh, it might be shooting style, maybe something I need to correct in the way I pull the trigger, but um, it's definitely definitely a, a, a cool gun, and I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. For $240 uh, shipped, it is an excellent carry piece. Uh, you know, this has moved into my nightstand. And this is what I carry with me when I go on Craigslist buys. This is what I carry with me in my truck when I feel I need it. Um, all in all, for the money, I'm really happy. Uh, don't expect it to perform like a $500 gun, because it's not. But for a $250 gun, $240 gun, I think it absolutely blows away anything, uh, any competition. The only thing I can really see competing with this thing in reality is maybe like a J-Frame 38 Special or something. Um, but for something this small and this thin that just, you know, you know, if you had to, you could stick it in your pocket even without a holster. It's not a great idea, but uh, it's easy to conceal. You can put it in a, in a ankle holster if you wanted to. It's just a real small, thin gun. And it does a, does a really good job of, of putting lead down target, down range on target. Thanks for watching this review. Uh, there's going to be more gun reviews coming soon as I get more firepower out here to the range. Uh, make sure to follow me, subscribe on Instagram, Facebook, uh, hit me up on Snapchat, you can shoot me a snap, ask me some questions, whatever. Uh, if you like this video, please subscribe, hit that like button, leave me a comment, let me know what you think. Uh, and that's it. Peace.